Quentin law is a mathematical rule used mainly to assist on all those partial effects. For example, if we want to create the illusion of a sound moving from one speaker to the other, we can choose between different panning laws to create different types of effects. In this video, we will see how we can create panning effects using panning laws. If we want to create the illusion of a sound moving from one speaker to the other, we need to increase the volume in one speaker and at the same time decrease the volume in the other. When we do this, we create a crossfade effect. Let's see how this sounds. To create this effect, we need to have a sound distribution system. In our example, we have a sound, in the case white noise, connected to two speakers. And we have a slider to control the amplitude for these two speakers. The slider goes from 0 to 1. So the sound for the right speaker increases from 0 to 1. And the same happens to the left speaker, if we move it to the opposite side. So the amplitude is inverted, and this creates the crossfade or panning effect. When transiting from one side to the other, different scales can be used. The scale will define the panning law. It can be generated by using mathematical functions. The easiest way of constructing a panning system is using a linear function, which is what we have just demonstrated here. The values go from 0 to 1. And the center will be 0 0.5. However, the linear panning law is not the most used because the amplitude is reduced in the center. When we set the sound in the center position, there, there will be a reduction of minus 6 dB. So let's listen to this. This happens because the way humans perceive loudness is not linear, and when we reduce the sound to its halves, 50% in one speaker and 50% in the other, the perceived sound does not add to 100% in loudness. Two speakers playing the same sound will not double the volume, because their frequencies will saturate inside our inner ear, instead adding them linearly. The linear law is not really a problem, it's a natural effect, and this can also be used as a musical effect, where the sound seems to distance from the listener, creating depth while it moves from one side to the other. But if the music producer or composer prefers to create a panning effect where the sound appears to move without a change in depth, it's possible to create another scale and use a constant power law. One possibility is to generate a scale using a square root function. If we calculate the values from 0 to 1 using the square root of each value, the number in the center position will be, instead 0 0.5, it will be 0 0.707. And the decibel value will be minus 3 dB. So there is still a decrease in amplitude, but it's not very much perceptible. Let's listen to this. Another possibility for constant power is the sine-cosine law. For this, we need to convert the values from 0 to 1 to an angular scale. The result is similar to the square root function. 
the center is the same, 0 0.707, and the reduction is the same, minus 3 dB for both. Just uh, the curve is a little bit different, so if we move to 1 fourth, one fourth to the left or one fourth to the right, the values will be a little bit different. Uh, for the sine function, we have 0 0.9, and for the square, we have 0 0.8. But they are very similar values, very similar scales, and um, it's not really perceptible the difference between them. Another suggestion for Punning law is a compromise between linear and sine cosine functions. If we calculate the square root for linear and sine, uh, the center will have the center will have 0 0.59 in gain, or a minus 4.5 dB reduction. The result is also similar to the other constant power laws. It's also possible to use scales based on exponential values. This will not provide constant power, but can create other interesting effects with depth. Finally, it's also possible to reverse the linear effect and instead of having the illusion of the sound moving away from us, we can have the illusion of the sound coming closer to us. To do this, it's necessary to add another scale on top of the linear scale. So we can add gain while the sound moves from one side to the center. So here you can see uh, another scale, a gain scale, on top of the linear scale. If we set this to 1, it will multiply per 1, so nothing will change. It will be just linear. But if we multiply this per 2 or 3, we will have uh, an increase in gain, and the sound will uh, seem to be approaching us. So let's see how this sounds. Some digital audio workstations and plugins for spatialization may treat pan law in a different way. Let's see some examples. Pro Tools and Cubase use mostly conventional laws. As we saw here in our examples, they offer us the options for minus 3 dB, which could be based on square root or sine function, minus 4.5 dB, which is the compromise law, and minus 6 dB which is the most basic function, the linear function. Cubase also offers an option for 0 dB in the center, and Pro Tools has also a different option, which is minus 2.5 dB. These two non-conventional functions are generated by an additional gain scale, and the result is an increase of volume in the center. The center becomes louder than the sides. If we use a gain scale on top of a linear scale, as we saw before, we can find these values. A minus 2.5 dB appears when we multiply the linear scale per 1.5 in gain. Let's see here.
and 0 dB in the center appears when we multiply the linear scale per 2 in gain. Let's try this. Sonar uses some conventional laws, offering two options for minus 3 dB, the sine function and the square root, but also provides other three functions for creating 0 dB in the center. Fruity Loops only provides two options, circular and triangular. Circular refers to constant power, probably based on the sine function, and it gives us minus 3 dB. Triangular just means linear, which is the natural effect of minus 6 dB. Logic Pro is a little bit more confusing when it comes to pan law. It offers 0 dB, minus 3 dB, and also minus 3 dB compensated. Minus 3 dB uses a common function to create constant power, which may be square or sine. 0 dB, as we saw before, increases the gain in the center. And minus 3 dB compensated is exactly the same thing as minus 3 dB. But instead of having minus 3 dB in the center, there is plus 3 dB on the sides. This is only useful if you have a stereo mix using 0 dB, which you need to convert to minus 3 dB. There is also an option to configure all logic plugins with the same law. Some plugins for panning will come with options for panning law. But be careful, because some will not give the value of decibels related to what happens in the center. Instead, the values will be given to the sides, which is a little bit more confusing, in my opinion. These are the main panel laws, and many other possibilities could be considered. And I hope this video could help you to understand a little bit more about panel law.